computer. I will upload Thursday's session probably tomorrow, maybe tonight, more than likely tomorrow morning. Um, I don't want to upload them the day right after I do them. So I'll probably upload them the day following the next session. But on Thursday, if you missed it, I talked about the DXY and the JXY, how they work and how they correlate with um, how we trade. Where's my JXY parent? It went away. Went away. But um, yeah, I covered that on Thursday. I showed you guys how you could be making money just by using the um, the JXY and the JPY pairs. But um, I'm not going to go back into that again because that session is over. And you guys will see it tomorrow when I upload it. Let me turn this music off. But what is up? Um, yeah, for you guys who don't know, since some people say they always miss it somehow, I have a YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is L Modern Trades. And if you're watching this on YouTube, um, I guess you already found my channel. But this is my YouTube channel. This is my same name on everything. It's on YouTube. It is at L Modern Trades. Oops, can I spell? Trades on Facebook. And it's also at El Modern Trades on Instagram. Everything is El Modern Trades. So if you search in El Modern Trades on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, you're going to find me. Yes, me. Now that you guys have that, on to this lesson. So today, I'm not going to go crazy again like I did before. I'm not going to try to cover a thousand pairs. I feel like sometimes when I get on here, I try to cover too many pairs for you guys to end up trying to speed talk through them. So instead of me covering like eight pairs at one time, what I'm going to do, show you guys where our trades from last week are at, and also, I'm going to show you guys how to make some of this money off these gold moves. You all know that I love gold. If you follow any of my channels before, or any of my videos before, any of my classes before, you know I love gold. And I'm pretty accurate with gold, especially when it comes to catching these big, big moves. So I'm going to um, show you guys a little, a little intro into my brain and let you guys know that I would say there's more than one way to skin a cat. I know everyone doesn't trade the same. I trade harmonics. I love harmonics. I trade break and retest. I trade head and shoulders. I trade, you know, supply zone, stuff like that, man. You know, the basic stuff mixing with some of the advanced stuff. But I'm going to show you guys, you know, a peek into my brain and what I see with harmonics on gold and how I'm so accurate with gold. Now, again, like I said, there's more than one way, more than one way to skin a cat. But we don't skin cats. So my analogy I'm going to use is there's more than one way to cook chicken. Yes, because if you think about it, everyone eats chicken, unless you're vegetarian. Everyone eats chicken, and there's literally a thousand ways to cook chicken. There's a thousand ways to trade. So my nudge is going to be, there's a thousand ways to cook chicken, not a thousand ways to skin cats. Ain't nobody out here skinning no cats. But um, so from last week, this gold trade, oh boy. I covered some of this on Thursday too. But um, let me show you guys this pattern right here. We have one here. So you guys who don't know, um, my page, my trading habits, everything I do is color coordinated. These rainbow colored trend lines, we'll get back to those later, but right now I was doing it just on the class to show you guys what was going on. But look at this on the daily. I gave you guys this trade when price was, I want to say somewhere up here on gold for the sell. I told you guys that gold would drop down to at least, um, 1557, 16, and you guys see it blew straight past it. Now, most people know I do not trade the um, D leg entry on a cipher unless it's on gold. But on this one, I didn't get into it. And I'll show you guys why. What I did, uh, what I did do, I sold it down. Now you guys see from that entry up there, way up top up here from this one, your first initial push could have netted you. Who was a thousand pips down? Now I showed you guys how to get into this trade again off of break and retest on this trend line, which I'm going to come back to and show you guys again. But from just from that entry, there is a potential for almost 2,000 pips. On the conservative scale, there's potential for 950 pips down from the entry. And if you'd have wrote this all the way down to um, the entry of the cipher, you would have had 1,500 pips. And this is all within, in, within a week. So it's definitely doable. Nothing special on this. It's just writing a, um, a trade from C to D. That's, that's all it is. You're probably looking at this cipher like, why the heck is this C point right here and not right here? because I never adjusted it. Now, now that, now that you guys seen this giant move, what I'm going to do is actually show you guys how I found this move and how gold plays so well with the basics of trading that you can find a move of this yourself. You can find a 2000 pip move, no problem, which I know I make it sound so simple, but like I said yesterday on my Facebook Live video, if you know what's coming, how do you lose? And you know what? I didn't get in this buy on gold 
and I'm looking at it like, hmm, I might need to, because look at this crazy wick down here, right here. This thing wicked down, like I want to say 200 pips past entry. That's why I had to get in this, this trade because when it started blasting through, I didn't, I didn't set a pending order. I didn't have a reason to get back into it. Now, if I would have gotten into it, I would have been negative like crazy. And I, I ain't about that negative life. Price did push back up at entry and this is currently, it went to a high of 100 pips. That being negative, like 500 pips ain't worth 100 pips. Yeah, 500 pips negative. I would not have, have taken that trade right there. Escape, what are you doing? Get up there. Okay, yeah, I would not have taken that. But you, I, I, I like, I love to, I can't talk. I love to trade the C to D on the cipher. Now you guys see what I have ghosted out in the background is an even bigger cipher pattern. So what I see can possibly happen here, either price is going to keep on pushing down, but you see right now it's on top of this big green trend line, which we're gonna get to also. I'm gonna show you guys how to get to this whole markup so it won't look as messy. But um, see this big green trend line I have bold right here? On top of that buy, this wick, all this right here is gone. So price can push up to this next wick or this last previous strong level, which would actually be right here. And then go bam, back down. I know some of you guys are probably thinking to yourself, okay, if the economy in the U.S. is going crazy and going bad, why is gold dropping? Because, 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 look at the U.S. dollar. Now, news would tell you that the economy is doing horrible. Stocks are falling. Oh, my God, U.S. dollar is crumbling. Why is the U.S. dollar been going up since March the 6th? Like, straight skyrocket up. Because everything needs a correction. It, it has to happen. Like a correction always happens. You can't just keep dropping, dropping, dropping. Every one of these strong pushes in one direction on the US dollar, look what happens over and over. Look at this strong push up. And that is your correction. Strong push up. That's your correction. Strong push up. Correction. And this thing is just riding this trend line. But look, Sam, it just happens over and over. Strong push up. Correction. Like it's just strong pushes and then corrections. Then it's a strong push down and a correction. Strong push down, correction. It just happens over and over and over and over again. So if I see, if I see a giant hard push down, you know there's gonna be a big correction coming. So at that point, and again, I talked about this on Thursday with the DXY and the JXY, but with a strong push down like that, you know a big correction was coming. Now, did I know a correction was gonna come up this hard? Eh, no. I thought it was gonna come like either right here or somewhere at one of these trend lines and stop and turn around. But look what happened. It blew straight past both of them. So now what can possibly happen on the DXY is price can go here and higher or price can just, you know, break straight past this, retest it and go lower. So this is where patient comes in. You don't have to chase anything with this. But back to gold. I am literally going to do a fresh markup on gold for you guys, like from scratch. So you guys can see how easy it is to trade gold because gold really loves trend lines and it loves harmonics. It loves the basics. And... I'm not gonna say harmonics are the basics, but harmonics are kind of basic moves that the market likes to make. And, and gold loves to follow those. So I'm gonna load some, let me see, I have a naked chart somewhere or old chart somewhere. Let's probably some old charts right here. How old? We don't know, but we're about to find out. Oh, yes, some old class. So we're gonna go to gold on here. Look at all this markup on gold. It doesn't matter because it's all getting erased. Um, so this is a completely blank chart. Now, this class may seem basic to some of you guys, but hold up, what do we have here? Let me see something real quick. May seem basic to you guys, but these basic moves on gold can get you paid in a major way. Yeah, uh, uh, oh my gosh. So what I see on this, right? I thought for a quick, a quick second that I had a bat pattern on here. I thought I had one. Even if I reach down lower and lower, I don't have one. Cause this would be, this would be my bat jump off point up here. This is my bat jump off point. And my price, the way I traded the bat, it didn't hit my 0.5 in the middle. It didn't hit my 50% retracement. Where is this at? It didn't hit this zone right here. So it didn't hit this. I don't see it as a bat, but price did hit 886 and took a dive. See that? 886 dived off the face of a cliff. But right now, none of that matters because it didn't hit my, it's, it's not a bat. It's not the way I trade a bat. Some people do trade a bat from that 382. Not I, I said the cat. I don't do that. 
So quick markup on, on gold real quick. And I'll show you guys just how these trend lines affect all these movements. It shows me kind of how we're, we're probably going to go at. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back to this messy markup and drop down to the 15 minute time frame. I'm going to hide some of the stuff because there's way too much stuff on here right now. Way too much stuff. Let me hide you. Let me hide you. Oh no, let me hide you. No, I'll keep going there. Um, patterns, hidden. What else can I hide? Hidden, hidden, hidden. Try to make this thing as simple as possible. Wherever this pattern at, hidden. Um, what else we got on here? Where's the triangle at on here? I don't even know it's even that. Doesn't matter, it's hidden. Um, there's another pattern on here, it's already hidden. So it's all that matters. So this is just a quick, quick heads up on how I show you guys how to get in this, how to get in this trade a couple of days ago. Um, I showed you guys the simple break and retest that happened right in this area right here. So if I zoom in on it, it, was, it wasn't the prettiest break and retest, but it was a break and retest nonetheless. When price pushed down right here, this strong candle right here was your retest. Now I dropped the information to you guys that, hey, um, when this pushed up, get into this trade, I said, this looks real break and retest-ish. It broke this, this green trend line. And on that break, this was your, Pink line was your break. This was your retest. This was your rejection. Even if you only caught the first piece of this rejection, you still, still would have banked. I want to say it was 100 plus pips. Yeah, that's 200 pip um, push down right there. You could have caught on that just off that break and retest. Now, for you guys who don't know, break and retest happens all the time. Every pair, guaranteed move. I'm not saying it's 100%, but it happens so much, you have to pay attention to it. A break and retest is one of the simplest moves in trading, trading anything. And it happens over and over and over again. Now, another example right here. This is break, retest, rejection. And then you had the same thing right there. This, this rejection right here wasn't as drastic or as big as this little one in here that I just showed you guys, but it happens over and over and over. Even on the horizontal trend line. Now, this is a diagonal trend line, which I love doing a break and retest on a, on a diagonal trend line because I feel like they hit harder when the diagonal trend line is finally broken. Um, we have a horizontal level of support and resistance. Yeah, they break and retest, but I feel like it, it don't hit the same. And this is a diagonal trend line for the test, for the test too. For example, um, look at this push down right here. Big push down. It found support, came back up to this red diagonal trend line. That was your break of it, your retest. Big, big rejection. Even on the smaller scale. Let me see if I can zoom in over here and see what I got here. Right there. That's yes, too close. You're too close, man. Way too close. Okay, let me just try this again. Bam, right there. So look at this red, this red trend line right here in the bottom, right here. This is your red trend line. Let me make it bigger so you guys see it. Or even on a smaller scale, this is your break, right? This is your break of that trend line. This candle retested it and then dropped down and still rejected it. Same thing. Yes, I do feel like diagonal trend lines go harder than rejection. Because I feel like the thing that a lot of people don't understand about diagonal trend lines, a lot of people don't use them. But the thing about them is, I know it's a mess on here. Don't worry about this mess. I'm going to show you guys a clean one for real. I promise. But, like, for instance, this, this, is, this is a perfect example. Let's say I didn't have any of these diagonal trend lines here in the middle. Let's say I didn't have these. I'm just going to erase them real quick, and I'll bring them back in a second. I'm just going to delete. I know I can hide it, but I don't want to go through the list and find it again. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to delete these real quick, all right? So let's say I didn't have those diagonal trend lines right there at all. Same thing here. So I didn't have this one either. I didn't have any of that on there. So now looking like if I just look at my level of support and resistance, which is this is my last level of support and it turned to resistance. Well, my lie. This is my last level of resistance right here that turned to support right here. Now you see price pushed up. If I did not have those diagonal trend lines coming across, how would I know that there's a chance that price could stop right here or break and retest right there or stop right there? There's no point of reference unless I just draw another, another um, horizontal line over and over and over. So those, those diagonal trend lines were drawn based off this move back here. But since I project them out to the future, it kind of shows me where price is going to go at again. So let me put those back on there real quick so you guys see what I'm talking about. So like, if I go way back, like taking it way back, back in time. Look where this top black trend line right here started at. Make this one nice and fat so you guys can see it. Look at that trend line. I'm gonna draw a box on it so you guys know what I'm talking about. 
Um, I got too much stuff. It's all over the place. Let me get my hotspot box. This started way back here. This is all the way in 2014. God dang, 2013. And then you have a touch. You have a rejection. You have a break and retest on that trend line. You have a nice rejection of that trend line. And it didn't come back into play again all the way until like last week. Well, this is last year. This is December. And then it came again and play again with that break and retest last week. So, I mean, like these trend lines, they kind of predict the future. Now, this is the same black trend line right here. You see it coming across. This is that box I just drew. And look how price still respected this trend line in the future. Like, I, I know that point is there because I drew all this based on that point way in the past. And look at this big break and retest right here. You see that right there? Price came there. On this, on this time frame, you can't really tell it's good, but on my higher time frame, you see price came right to that trend line. It came right to it. So that's a nice break, retest, rejection. And again, it does happen on the horizontal level, levels of support and resistance, but those, those diagonal trend lines that most people don't see, they give you really good, really good moves, like really, really good moves. Let me go back, back. Okay, let me go back to this clean chart though. This is what I'm supposed to be doing is this clean chart anyway. So I can show you guys how to even get to that point. Because honestly, if I open up a chart and I see a, a pattern forming up or something like that, I can draw the pattern and then draw the levels of support and resistance. And a lot of times it still lines up. I'm gonna give you guys a perfect example. I'm gonna drop this cipher that I had on here on that big blue cipher. So uh, I'm not gonna grab from this low point. Sorry, no, this is not a pattern, but I'm grabbing from this point right here. And for, for purposes, so you guys see what I'm talking about, I'm gonna drop a line right here at this low. Bam, that's my low point, All right? Here. It doesn't have to be exact, but close enough. So, but just by me dropping the line on that low point right there, I now know this is right in the way. Okay, try this one more time. Just from dropping the line on that low point, I now know that this is the low for my cipher. This is my jump out point for my cipher. Now, just from that one line right there, I can look in the past and see that I have nice level of support right there. Nice level of support right there. Nice level of support, low head and shoulders right there. Um, resistance right there. Same thing here, support is not exact, but a nice level of resistance break and retest right there. This horizontal line is showing me that, okay, it has a lot of touches on it. It is definitely a legit line. But even if I didn't draw this line there, that would still be my jump out point for my cipher. Why is that? Because I'm going to take my Fibonacci tool, I'm going from here, my hypothetical X point, to my hypothetical um, A point. Bam, right there, X to A. So now that I have that, this would be, X, oops, that should not be a cipher, this should be an X. My caps lock on, X, A, X, A, and then hypothetical B, and I say hypothetical, because we don't know what's gonna line up at until after we do it. Not that B, but uh, B, B. There you go, B. Hypothetical B right there. Now, if you guys saw my pattern before, this B point was actually my X point to my smaller pattern. But yeah, we're right, like it's right on that line. It hit 382, that's all that matters. 382 right here, it hit it, that's all that matters. For your cipher, your B point is between 382 and 618. Let me make this a nice blue box. I always use the blue box. It should be, bam, change. And change it blue. That's your B point retracement you're looking for. So you have impulse leg right here. This is your impulse up. Impulse leg retracement, which is back to B. Your next move you're looking for is C, which is gonna be up here. So if you guys saw I had those red boxes on my last gold markup, I'm just gonna mark this as C up top already so I know this is, what, this is what C is, but this is again hypothetical C because I haven't fibbed it yet. This is hypothetical C. So there's your hypothetical C right there. So now that I have that, I can get rid of this first fib. Bam. I'm gonna fib from A, from the highest point of A, all the way back down to X. This line is just here, just for reference of me know what's, what's going at. So I'm looking for C to fall between 1272 and 1414. Now it can wick past 1414. It cannot close past 1414. Look what we have there, wicks, wicks, wicks. That is fine, wicks are fine. So this is my legit check box for my, um, my Cypher C zone. Let me make this a nice red box, bam. That's my legit check box. So now that I have that information, I can now, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to drop a line on A2 just so I can know my point of reference, but it doesn't really matter too much. 
So I'm just gonna drop a line right at A, right about there, right about there. Now these lines are black because these are drawn on my daily time frame. But yeah, it's my X, A, B. I can now go find C, which is gonna take a fib from X all the way to C. Not where C is supposed to end at, but where C actually ended at. So X to C right here. So now that I have that, I can drop a line, my by line, where at 786 where D is gonna be at. This is 786, you drop this by line, bam. So now that I have that, I can draw my whole pattern out. Let me erase this fib. Let me go, make sure I'm on cipher. Basic cipher, we're going X to A, A to B, B to C, where it actually went at, C to D, where your entry would be at. So remember, this pattern was drawn up, had to be, let me see, what date is this? End of February. And it's just coming to fruition. But it came to fruition to, with the 2,000 plus pit move. So when I called this out for you guys, anyone who, who decided to take that sell would have caught it easy 2,000 pips. I say easy because it took no work of your own, just listening to what was said in the chat. You catch 2,000 pip move. A 2,000 pip move is nothing to sneeze at. There's people out here who, who hope and pray for a, a 200 or a 20 pip move. So a 2,000 pip move, that's, that by itself is crazy that gold even moved that much in a couple of weeks. And people who are thinking that, oh my God, gold's gonna be a safe haven. And gold might still be the safe haven currency, but as of now, if the US dollar is pushing up, the um, government is you know, kind of not inflating the dollar, but they're putting more money in the system to help these um, businesses and stuff like that. It is gonna make the US dollar seem strong or be strong. Drop an interest rate, US dollar is gonna be strong. Now it might be artificially strong, but strong none the least. So look, look at what this byline is at. This is why I told you guys, I can go on a naked chart and just draw my fibs and draw my levels for my chart for my um for my pattern, and it still ends up lining up with major levels. Look at my buy line I drew, which is based just off that 786 on the fib. Look to the left. Look at this over here. Not a coincidence. Well, well, I, uh, not a coincidence. Look at this. It's the fib just lines up. Look at that. Look at all that resistance right there. Resistance. Resistance. What did that all show me? Resistance. And then right here, that's support. It's support because price is on top of that. For you guys who, this is your first time on my session or you're new, know that this is support when price is on top of the line. Being that price is on top of this blue line right here, that's support, that's support. Price is under this line or rejecting off that line, that's resistance, that's resistance. All this resistance, all that resistance, all that resistance right there. So now, like I said, it's not just by chance that this stuff happens to line up. So what gives me so much confidence in this cipher pattern is that Okay, now I drew this pattern up without drawing any lines on my chart, no levels of support or resistance or anything, but my next major level, my next major, major level is my buy point. So what did that show me? That showed me that when price does decide to get down here in this zone somewhere, there's a high chance it's gonna reject off of it. It might, it might only reject back to B like right here, but there's a high chance it can reject off of it because this is a major level of support right there. Now, yes, price does sometimes, it might decide you want to blow past it, but we ain't stressing on that right now. We just know that when price gets down here, it's a high chance that it's going to, it's going to reject off. I'm not saying that it's guaranteed it's going to happen. There's a high chance it's going to happen, though. That's all I'm saying. That's all the way down to 1358 where your buy is at. But look how strong that zone is. Like, that's a super strong zone. Even the points that didn't quite touch that zone, like, for instance, these ones down here, this didn't quite touch that zone, but it's still in that zone. Like all the stuff is still in that zone. All that movement, look at this red box. All that stuff is still legit in that zone. So again, that's just showing me there's a high chance that when gold gets down there, it's going to reject off that point. And right now, what gold did with this big rejection right here, it's actually, what actually did was reject off B. So I can bet you if I drop a line where B is at, I'm just gonna make this another black line since I'm on a daily time frame right about here, even though I can't really see it. Let me actually ghost this out real quick. Where'd the line go at? So we're gonna drop this right, I still can't see it. There you go, right at B. Look how close, how much closer can you get to price coming back to B, right there. Look how close it is. But again, another telltale sign. Look where price stopped at by itself. Did a super hard rejection. Look where it stopped at, and look at this point. Look at that, look at that support right there. Look at that resistance right there. This by itself also is a break and retest. That's my arrow. This is a break of this black line, a retest of this black line, which is a daily level, a rejection of it right here. This is all just a rejection of that. 
So as I said, the break and retest works on any pair, any time frame. It happens over and over. Yes, that's a pretty strong break and retest right there. But on a diagonal time frame, you can get even more of those. That's why I love the diagonal trend line so much. So I'm gonna show you guys how to even find those too. So just from this little bit of information on this um on this pair right now, I'm gonna ghost this out a little bit, make it a little bit, you know, put it out there. Bam, there you go. So it's still there, but not prominent. So with these trend lines, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna zoom all the way out because some of this stuff is way back here. Like this is 2015 right here. I'm not gonna say it doesn't matter, but it because it does matter right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my diagonal trend line, which you look if you're on trading view, look to the left, it literally says trend line on it. I'm gonna take this trend line and I'm going to go to just the bar, which is one of my presets I made. All this just the bar is, it's literally just just a line. So I can just draw at any any like angle or size or whatever. I can draw one right here, right? Now I'm drawing this trend line right here based off of just these two points. Well, these four, maybe five points right there in there, the more touches on your trend line, the better those points, this point and this point. Now, most people will stop right there. I don't, this is why my, this is why my charts look so crazy for, because what I tend to do is just because I have a trend line right here, I noticed a long time ago, I was like, you know what? These trend lines can technically go on forever in either direction. So now I can take this, go to my settings and extend left and extend right. Now that I have this, I can see that price came pretty close to that a couple of multiple times, right? Nothing major that it missed, but look what happens when I copy this line over. Let me take this and make it thinner and make this a different color. I'll make it pink, hot pink. Look what happens when I copy this, control and drag it over. Now this same trend line stands tall if I drop it right here. Now I'm gonna change the color of this block real quick. Matter of fact, I'll make it the hot spot one. Kind of hard to see because it's kind of thick, but it's, it should be fine. Oops. What I'll do is make it the hot spot box and I'm, I'll thin the, the size out a little bit. Now I'll thin the size out, right? I'm still in my daily time frame. I haven't even dropped down time frames yet, but look at this. So I copy the same pink line. I make this one blue or purple or something just so you know which line is which. This is the second line, which is copied from the first line. Take my hotspot box right there. Look at that rejection. Rejection. So if you look really close to here, I'm gonna zoom in real quick. There's a break and retest right there. You guys see it? Break. Remember right? You guys see right here? Break, retest, rejection. This is on the same zoom out so you guys see where I'm at. Uh, where am I at? Oh, right here. That was that right there just now. That little small section right there. Break, retest, rejection. It's showing that that trend line is being respected. It's a blue trend line. So now that I have that, I can now look in the future and look and see what happens. Rejection. Rejection. Scroll into the future. Look how far back this started. This started way back in September 2017 and just came back into play. Look at these rejections on that. Price does not want to be on, like on that trend line. It hits it and it turns itself off of it. So like it doesn't really want to be there. So that's just giving me more confirmation that when price got in that zone up there, I should be selling. That is my my one two seven two to seven. No, I lie. My one two seven two to one four one four extension right there. Every time price touched that line, it rejected off of it. That's three long daily wicks on there. Every time touch your rejection, even even just those wicks by itself, you would have just gotten based off of that. It's in your zone. There's a daily trend line right there, rejection. You could have caught 100 plus, well, 1,000 plus pips on the way down. If you didn't catch the whole thing, you could have caught at least a few hundred pips off of this, just off that rejection right there. So I can now go, I can copy the same trend line over, or I can find a new trend line, because trend lines happen all over on gold. But I'm just showing you, I'm gonna show you guys to show you that gold definitely it loves these trend lines. Like it follows the trend. And you can make any kind of prediction you want to on gold. But if you got no trend line to support it, it might not, it might not do its thing. So now this is again, same trend line, copy the pink one over again. I just drug it to a, the next, the next major point I saw, which was right here. I made this one right here blue. Whoa, too big. Bam, there you go. I made this one blue. This is the new one. Well, I'll make it pink so just to match that pink line. New one, pink. So look what happened right there. It, it touched that and did the same thing again. Hit that line, went right under it. All back here in the past, this is like all based off the same trend line. I probably can adjust the trend line a little bit more to make it more, more on the endpoints. But look at that. Even if I don't readjust it, 
look at the respect of that trend line. Look how price just wicks off of it. Like, gold really does love these trend lines. Like, it attracts to them and it rejects off of them. When it breaks one, there's a high probability a retest is coming. Now, if I, if I go down to a smaller time frame, like a one hour, let's see what this pink trend line did in the one hour. Look how close, look how price came to this. Respecting that. Respecting that trend line every time. And again, this, this trend line is drawn based off a move way back in 2017, just some on a daily time frame. Um, on a higher time frame, you can even tell there's multiple touches in here. But look at that. Look at those multiple touches on that pink trend line right there. Let it go even farther back in the past. We're going farther. Let me see if I can even find it again right here. Some on a one hour. There you go. Look at that. That rejection, that rejection, even on the smallest, like the smaller time frame, this, this trend line still stands tall. Look, look at that. Look at those rejections off of that. This is all off that one trend line, which just copied from the original trend line over and over. So back when all this right here was going on, was it 2018? Yeah, back when all this right here was going on, this is when I was, I was trading gold, but I wasn't trading gold the way I trade gold now. And the way I trade gold now, it, it's even more accurate because I see that gold, yes, it does respect the patterns, but boy, does it respect the basics a whole, whole lot. When I can incorporate the patterns into the basics, it makes life even better. It makes life easier. So now look what happens if I copy this pink trend line one more time. I know I said trend line a lot. I copy the same pink one to the bottom of here, right? I'll make this color, oh, my nose is itching. I'll make this color purple, color purple. Now I'm gonna take my box again. I make my box purple too. Just so you guys can see how this works and how it's been working. Now that I copied the same one down, the reason I made it purple before is now I'm in a four hour time frame, no longer on the daily time frame. If I copy the same angle, all of these trend lines are based off this one pink trend line right here. Look how this, look what this did. Break and retest, rejection, 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 a break, a retest, and a rejection. A rejection all in the middle of here a break and retest respect of the trend line right there all these rejections of this trend line so like again even if i didn't have a pattern on here just by me seeing how much these trend lines are being respected and i know if i copy one of these over there's a high chance that price is going to gravitate towards one or the other it's going to pull towards one of these trend lines and sometimes in some cases it might pull both of them like right here it pulled past this to the second one then right back down and broke and retest the first one like gold, it, it loves them. It loves them. I know I reiterate the same thing over and over. I know I say the same thing over and over a lot about gold and what it does with these, with these trend lines, but I say it because it's true. It is definitely true. And look at this purple trend line. I didn't even draw it on the side, but look at this purple trend line right here. Look at that. When price made this little W formation in the middle, it came right back to that same trend line again. And this break and retest came right back to that same trend line again. Same thing here, the lower peak on this came to that same trend line. And remember, this trend line was not even drawn based on this information on this side of the chart. It was drawn based on the information way back here. It's based on all this back here, way back from 2018. And it's still, it still holds weight today. And again, all these trend lines are based off one. And the funny thing is, you can find different angles of a trend line, and a lot of times they still stand true if you extend them to the right and to the left. Now, the reason I extend them to the right is because, yes, all this is in the past, and it might just go down to oblivion down here. But, you know, you can have a different angle trend line. For example, I might find a trend line at a flatter angle. I'm going to draw a different one real quick. Um, I'm going to draw one, like, right. Let me make this just a bar real quick. I want to make this one, like, right here. This is a flatter angle trend line right here. I'm just drawing this based on literally nothing right now. I'm just drawing this based on these few points right here, right here, right here, right here. So you see this isn't fully extended right now. So now let me extend this to the right and to the left. I right, have a shortcut for that already. I'm just gonna go to it. It says daily trend line, bam. Extend it to the right and the left. Um, now you guys see why I have so many freaking trend lines on my, um, on my charts for. So now I just extend this black trend line just now, right here, I'll make it nice and thick so you guys can see it. So it stands out, bam. So I drew this based on these purple boxes. Now I'm going to the future. In the future, what do we have here? Surprise, rejections, all in there. Surprise again, rejection, another surprise. Look at that big rejection up right there. And I can bet you any money, if I copy this trend line at a different, the same um, black trend line, if I copy it up 
it's going to make the same effect. Meaning that if I copy this in either direction, down or up, do the same thing. I'm going to copy it all the way over here. I'm just going to copy this way over here, like right here. And this copy I just did just now is based off this point and this point. Now, I know I have too many freaking boxes on here now, but I did this just so you guys get the point that these trend lines definitely hold weight on gold. Like, look at that rejection, rejection, all right there, rejection. Even when price came down here, it almost touched that. It came in the zone, rejected. That wasn't the perfect one, but it's a good example still that I can bet you any money if I drop this down to a smaller time frame, they, some of these some of these rejections are like on point precise. And it's all based off just copying the trend line over because gold loves trend lines. I don't know why it loves it, but this thing is looking real crazy right now. With all these boxes and lines on it. But you guys get the freaking point. Um, let me see if I copy this one one more time. The same pink trend line that started all of this. Let me copy this way down here. What do I have? Oh, about right there, actually. I'm copy this right here. Now, what I'm copying this is off. You, know, you guys can't tell my eyes are at. It's based off just this one point right here. Literally just that one blue point right there what it's based off of. Now, by copying that over, what do I have here? Hey, look, a break and retest. Hey, look, rejections. Hey, look, another break and retest and rejection off of that. And almost all this support is on this one trend line, which is based off of just this top pink trend line. Now, let me go to a smaller, smaller time frame. What a one hour one more time. Now, on a one hour, this is that same trend line I just copied over right here. I'm gonna make it green so you guys see it. This is a green one and make it nice and thick. Look how clean that break and retest is on there. Right there. This is your break, this is your retest, this is your rejection. And again, all this is based off literally one trend line. All these rainbow color trend lines going up are all based off just this one pink trend line right here. I'm not saying go on your charts and go trend line happy. What I am saying is, if you decide to um, start playing with some trend lines on gold or on any pair that you do, just know that gold is gonna highly respect them. And know that if you copy them over, it doesn't matter the space in between. I'm pretty sure there's a way of trading these with a certain type of space in between and stuff like that. That's gonna make money also. But the way I trade them, I literally just copy that trend line over. So by doing that, I am, I am showing, <laughs> I'm just showing that Price is going to gravitate towards one or, one or the other. One of these trend lines is going to get tapped. That's all I'm saying. Do, no, not do you. Does anyone have any questions? And if you see this and you're thinking to yourself, I don't trade trend lines that way. Like I told you guys earlier, there's a thousand ways to cook chicken. It's not a thousand ways to skin the cat because we ain't skinning no cats over here. But we are cooking some chicken though. So there's a thousand ways to cook chicken. I know this chart is now a mess. But it was all for educational purposes. There's boxes everywhere. All this was just to show you that, all this was literally just to show you that um, these, these things stand, these things, these things hold weight. They definitely hold weight. And if you utilize them right, you can definitely get great entries on trades. Because imagine if you knew you had a big cipher pattern on here and you knew that you had a trend line right here too. You can get in that trade and not worry about it. Because you know the highest point that this price is probably going to go, was going to go at was to the next trend line. So you might have been negative for a second, but you're risking, I can't even see what it even says up there. You've been risking 300 pips to get 2,000. Pretty good risk to reward ratio, if you ask me. 2,000 pips, nothing to sneeze at. I understand some people's account can't take a 300 pip loss or even risk a 300 pip loss because, I mean, your, your account just might can't sustain that. But if you're doing proper risk management, those 300 pips would have definitely been worth 2,000 pips. And definitely once you started falling, you knew that it was time to get in the trade. Because again, like I told you guys, price was going to fall to um, 1557, which it did. It blew straight past it. And right now, it wicked off almost the B point, and it rejected up right now. And we have an even bigger cipher waiting on. So when price might come up here and – I know I have too many arrows there. Price might come up here and do its thing and do whatever it's going to do and dance around and whatever it's going to do. But I see it coming here for this buy and then doing what it really wants to do. Then all the people be happy with their um be happy with their 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 US dollar pushing up real hard right now, but just be on the lookout for this gold. So look at this US dollar going crazy. Pushing up hard, real hard. And this is my old chart. 
Hold on, I can't tell. I can't tell. There's too much markers going here. That is the old chart. This is the. There you go. Yeah, they all look the same because they all have. They're all a mess. But it's a mess that I can read. And I make sure that when I send you guys um trade setups that I have it to where you guys can read it too. And this is like a mess of freaking lines and dotted lines and squares and shapes. But there's a lot of layers on this thing. Probably probably like a hundred layers already on here. Let me see. Just that quick, I drew 84 layers on this thing. I'm gonna erase all of them too. All you guys can get off of here. All of you, get out of here. All this stuff. Oh, this is going too fast. Way too much crap on here. We're gonna go all the way back to just that one pink trend line. Just to show you guys that all of this was started just off that one trend line right there. And that one trend line held the weight to, to make a lot of money, a whole lot of money. And don't, don't think that once you, this is with this virus around, in your opinion, how is it affecting the markets? You know what's crazy? It's not affecting the forex market a whole lot. It's more so affecting the stock market or the S&P 500, US 30, those things, which we can trade. I don't trade any of those. I don't trade the US 30. I don't trade S&P 500. Um, I'll trade that stuff. The U.S. dollar is pushing up because the economy is going crazy. Um, but you would think that the U.S. dollar would be pushing down and gold would be going up to people because gold is usually a safe haven currency is what it is. And people probably are putting their money in gold, but with all this recovery stuff they're trying to do with the economy to make sure that the U.S. dollar is safe and doesn't fall off the face of the earth, um, it's, it's pushing the dollar up. If I go to this dollar, which I'm on right now, I'm going to make this chart real naked real quick. Everything's gone. I'm going to go to the weekly. Hmm, what do I see here? It looks like a, a bat pattern or a garlic pattern. Now I can't measure it right now because if I do, it's going to put stuff back on here. Let's see. Bam, everything's back. But um, it's a garlic pattern on, on the on the on US dollar right there. So what that means? That means that entry on a garlic is way down here. So if the dollar falls all the way down here, which could take a while, but if it does, People are going to lose their SHIT, aka sugar honey iced tea. But it's possible because the gold was just down there in 2013, 2014. See where it's at? And it pushed up real strong. It's been riding up here for a while. Now, I showed you guys earlier with any hard push, this is a hard push and a correction, and a hard push and a correction, and a hard push. And this correction went lower than the hard push did. And there's so much crap that you can't see it, but turn this off, what is price doing? It's kind of just been losing momentum. I said that very weird just now, losing momentum. You see how price has just been chopping, chopping, chopping. Look how hard these pushes are right here. You can see green candle, green candle, green candle, green candle, one red one, green candle, green candle, one red one. And it's a bunch of red, a couple green, a bunch of red, a couple greens. So you see how these pushes are real, like they're real confident pushes. These ones right here are kind of like choppy, choppy, choppy back and forth, steadily going up, but not really. But if you guys see what happens, this is happens on almost every single pair, even though the DXY is not a pair, it happens on almost every pair. Price consolidates and then it makes a big move. For instance, this right here, consolidation and a big move. Consolidation and a big move. Consolidation, big move. Standing here, the consolidation and look at that hard push in one direction. Consolidation, big move. And it kind of looks like prices losing momentum, losing steam, consolidating. Yes, there is a really, really big green candle right here. But overall, this is a this is a really big garlic pattern forming up. And that means if this pattern is going to complete, price is going to drop. That's what that means. So in gold, gold's been riding high. Gold's riding very high. You know what's funny? Gold actually has a really big garlic forming on it too. Now, this might take forever and a day literally to complete. If I grab from right here. So all the way up here, what do we have? A Gartley pattern forming up. Um, let me look even bigger. This is gonna take forever, literally forever to complete. If it does complete, it hit past 618. So you're entering your Gartley is all the way down here at, at, at 86. And this is simple explanation. There's actually a money zone on here and stuff that I'm not talking about right now, but just for haha -ha sake, the money zone on this Gartley is almost right at 86. So let me make this money zone green. This is a huge pattern, literally a huge pattern. Will it complete? Who knows? Um, if it does, this, I, don't, I, don't see the, I don't see gold melting and the US dollar melting at the same time. Because you imagine if that actually happened, 
if the US dollar melted and gold melted at the same time, now this is a weekly pattern. So that means that this thing was started back in 08. I don't see this, for, I don't foresee this completing anytime soon. I also don't see both of these things completing together at the same time. There's no way that, well, I can't say there's no way. I don't see it as gold dropping down thousands of pips and the US dollar dropping down a whole lot of value. I don't see that happening because they usually inverse. But if that does happen, I mean, there's some, um, some, freaky, some freakiness going on. That'd be some real freakiness going on with both of them dropping down. Now, I'm talking about freakiness in a good way. I mean, freakiness as in people are really going to lose their sugar honey iced tea for real. Um, any other questions? <laughs> I just read my text just now from um from Brandon. Um, if Brandon, if you're still on, I understand, man. But um, if there's no other questions, um, this video will probably be uploaded. I say probably Wednesday or Thursday. Last Thursday session will be uploaded tomorrow. This one probably be uploaded either. Well, I'm gonna say Thursday. I'm gonna say Thursday or Friday. I want to upload these after the previous session. But after the next session, I'm confusing myself. But either way, go. If you guys who um, hopped on here late, my YouTube, where these get uploaded at, is at, I can't type it at, L Modern. I can't spell. Trades. That's my YouTube. That's my Instagram. That is my Facebook. Everything for trading for me is there, right there. And this will be actually on my YouTube channel for sure. For show, sure. and this is basically just a session on gold. So I guess I'll call this video the gold session from March, the the big gold move, the gold cipher. It's me, something dealing with gold. I love gold. Gold loves me. Something like that. Um, but you guys saw we had a two thousand pip move on gold. Um, the people in my chat, they definitely should have caught pips off of that move. I hope, I hope and pray you guys caught pips off of that move because it was called out play by play like I was a sportscaster. But if you guys did not catch it in the next one. But um, for you guys who are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, definitely get subscribed to it. Um, I would appreciate that. You guys want to keep up with the, what's going on. But with that being said, I will holler at you guys on the next one. Be easy. <laughs>